So last time we talked about strain, uh, we defined one-dimensional strain mathematically, right? So today we're going to work on defining two-dimensional strain mathematically. And you guys told me that strain in general is the change in length over original length, right? Change in length over original length. And so um, this might be a little bit hard to see, but basically, uh, and you can you know you can look at this on the video or, or on the web and get a better picture. But if you can't see it from there, th this box represents a undeformed rectangle, and the corners of the rectangle are um, labeled A, B, C, D in capital letters. Okay, and the rectangle has sides dx and dy. This represents a deformed rectangle, same corners A, B, C, D, but now using lowercase letters um, for labels. So just to indicate this is the deformed configuration, and this is the undeformed or reference configuration. Okay, And so if we want to know uh, the change in length of this line segment, AB, right, capital AB, from the change in length from the um, deformed to the deformed configuration, or undeformed to deformed configuration. And what we'll do is we'll define uh, something we'll call epsilon x, basically the, the strain in the x direction. We'll define it just based on those line segments. So we'll look at, we'll look at the change in length of this line segment. So this line segment's originally this length, and it's originally this length. And we're just going to use our labels and math and geometry to kind of figure out what this is. So you guys told me last time it's the change in length. So the length of the vector AB, so I'm saying what I'm saying there, that's the magnitude of the vector AB. Right? So AB is one thing. It's the vector that goes from A to B. Right? This, it's this vector, you know, vector b minus a. Right? The position of b minus the position of a defines that vector. And the, mag the bars on the side represent the magnitude of that vector. Okay? Minus the magnitude of capital AB. Right? So that, that's the change in length. Right? This is the deformed length. Subtracting the original length, that gives me delta length, right? The change in length over the original length is that guy. Well, the original length, just because we labeled it, the original length is dx. So I can replace the, the AB, the capital ABs, with dx. So this is the vector A goes from A to B over dx, dx, or you can write that as that thing. Right? So let's write down what the vector AB is in terms of just the labels that we have here and the geometry, right? And so, uh, you know, again, the, the, the vector AB is this point B minus A, right? So here we're, we're only concerned with the x direction, right? So we're, we're, we're only looking at the change in length in the x direction, right? And so if you see these labels, this, this distance here is u of x, right? Just by label, right? This distance here is u of x. This distance here is dx, okay? And this distance here is partial u of x, partial x, dx, okay? So that's the change in length of this little piece right here. And so if I want to know the, the x position of b, it's u of x plus d of x plus 
e of x minus dx, right? That gives me that, that point so that I can get the x component, okay? And then I can subtract that point, and that point is just e of x. And so uh, I'm going to use the subscript x, okay? So this is a, b, in the x direction. So again, write down b first, so that's u of x, u, you know, u and the, the x component of u plus dx plus partial of the x component of u with respect to x dx. So this whole thing, again, is b. And then I'm going to subtract a, and a is u of x. Right? And so then that cancels with that, all right? And so we're looking for, again, we're looking for the, the magnitude of the vector. I guess I should have written this before. We're looking for the magnitude of the vector AB. The magnitude of the vector AB is the sum of the squares of the components, square root and sum of the squares of the components. Right? Okay. So again, we're, we're trying to compute that thing in bars, which is if written in component form is this. And so right now we wrote down this term. Okay. So then, since we really want ABX squared, let's just go ahead and square this thing. So we'll go ahead and square this. Finish writing this down. This is uh, equal to dx plus. So we'll go ahead and square that thing. And so then that is That thing. And likewise, AB, the Y component of AB is just this. square that guy, so we have that, all right? So now, I can take this term and this term and stick it in here, okay? Now, one thing I didn't mention is that we're assuming that this deformation is small, okay? And strictly, our, our definition of small is that the gradient, of the, the magnitude of the gradient of the displacements is much, much less than one, okay? So that's our definition of small, 
But because we're making this assumption small, then these squared derivative terms are negligible. Okay. Because if you know if the gradient if the gradient uh, of displacement is really small, right, much less than one, when you take a number much less than one, a really small number, and you square it, you get an even small no smaller number, right? So we're gonna say that these guys are negligible, like that. And then, because I don't, you know, I have this square root sign that I don't like. I don't want to deal with the square root sign, so I'm going to square both sides of this equation. So just square both sides, and that, you know, puts a squared there and gets rid of that square root sign. Now let's uh, let's look at this equation. So we have we have this equal to that, right? And so then just down here, let me write that over. And if I rearrange that equation, so if I add 1 to both sides, I get that. Uh, and then if I multiply through by dx, I get, I get uh, that. Now I want to square both sides of that equation. So if I square both sides of that equation, I get that. So now I have I have an equation over here that's in terms of the magnitude of a b squared. So I'm going to take what's left here, this guy. Plug it in there. Sorry, I'm working all over the place here. It's just hard. I want to leave this figure up. It's kind of hard to just work in one spot on the page. Um, OK, so, so I'm going to replace that guy with what's over there, dx squared plus 2 partial ux partial x dx squared. So now you notice there's a dx everywhere. So the dx, I'm sorry, dx squared. So I have dx squared, dx squared, dx squared. So I can cancel those guys. Right, that makes this one. That cancels. You know, by dividing through by dx squared. So. So then I, you know, I still have one plus two. Then I'm going to expand this square root sign, I mean the squared term. So I can go ahead and write out, uh, write out the terms there. And that would give me epsilon x squared plus 2 epsilon x plus 1. Okay. And again, because we have small deformations, we're going to assume that's negligible. Right. And so then I have a 1 on both sides of the equation. I can cancel. I have a 2 on both sides of the equation. I can cancel. And finally, I get this definition. OK? So our strain in the x direction in two dimensions is consistent with our strain in one dimension in the sense of, you know, in, in one dimension, there's no x component of u, right? It's just u, the displacement. In two dimensions, there's two components, one in the x and one, y, one in the y. But our, our x component of strain is just partial u of x, partial x. 
and I won't, I won't go through it, but you can basically follow the same procedure to get the strain in the y direction, and you'll see that it's partial u y, partial y. Okay. 